Good morning and welcome to our worship at Morningside United Church. A warm welcome especially to those who are watching from other churches within the United Reformed Church in the Synod. All of you are welcome to share into our life and witness here. You're welcome to look at our website and understand what happens at Morningside as we seek to serve our community, our neighbours and strangers alike. Today we're reading from Mark's Gospel, a question that's difficult for all people. Jesus says, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? A question that we all have to face at some point in our lives. The idea that somehow we're held accountable for our behaviour, for our actions, for our Christian witness. Today we will examine these things and in quietness and in stillness, in music and in word, we might find the truth of the gospel, that Jesus would be with us and show compassion and love even to the end. So let us pray. Almighty God, from the bottom of our hearts, we bless you for this new day, for the sleep behind us, the food within us, the light upon us, and the love around us, for the needs and hopes that we share with people everywhere, for our thoughts and our struggles, our burdens and our worries, for all that we hold in common with your faithful people gathered in every corner of the earth this Sabbath. Allow us this morning, as we worship you, to have our prayers and hymns of praise heard, so that you might fill us with your spirit and bless our worship. Give us this morning openness to one another in love and openness to you in response to your love for us. Give us honesty with ourselves as we face our demons and temptations. Give us strength to see how our actions have consequences for those around us and grant us inner balance and purpose as we seek to find meaning in our lives and situations so that we might find our commitment to you, which is nothing else than the discovery of peace and love. This morning, renew in us life and let the fruit of the Spirit be seen in us so that your good work in the world might be done through us. But above all, O oh God, show us the face of Jesus so that we might aim to serve him as our Saviour in all that we do. And so we confess our sins 
those things that have tarnished and weakened the lives of those around us. Forgive us for those things that sap the energy of those people whom we love. Forgive us for our indifference to the plight of others that makes us seek after our own selfish desires. Forgive us for failing to reconcile with our neighbours, with families and friends, when we do wrong or feel hurt by them. But assure us that as we confess our sins, you grant us mercy and unfailing love to transform us into the people you've called us to be, renewed beyond our own faults and failings, truly forgiven and touched by your grace and mercy. Amen. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 17. As he was starting out on a journey, a stranger ran up and, kneeling before him, asked, Good teacher, what must I do to win eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false evidence. Do not defraud. Honour your father and mother. But teacher, he replied, I have kept all these since I was a boy. As Jesus looked at him, his heart warmed to him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At these words his face fell, and he went away with a heavy heart, for he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked round at his disciples and said to them, how hard it will be for the wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. They were amazed that he should say this, but Jesus insisted, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were more astonished than ever and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men it is impossible, but not for God. Everything is possible for God. Here ends the reading.
hear these words from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said to them, How hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? And with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. This week I've been considering the suffering of many, particularly in these crazy times when we're considering the fallout and the effects of a new world, where lockdown is easing and where families are coming together and people are returning to work and to the shops and what seems normality. What is it to witness to the Christian life in these kind of times? What is it to consider all that we see and all that we've experienced? In Morningside this week, for example, a little toddler was killed in a road accident and people were affected tremendously. I've sat with others who are going through particularly hard times, who are planning weddings, who are discovering something of what it is to be relational yet again. People who have suffered a long time and two experiences affected me more than any. The first was a conversation with a young person, someone who has real faith but is struggling at this moment to make sense of what faith means particularly since they've been unable to see their friends. And they were telling me, it's difficult to be a Christian. It's difficult to witness to what I believe. And that struck me. What does it mean to live the Christian life in this day and age? And the second conversation followed the death of a minister colleague of mine, the Reverend Colin McPherson. One of the things that Colin and I used to talk about a lot was the sense of how to bear witness in the changing world to a gospel that somehow will give hope despite circumstances that seem beyond us. And I was considering his work and his ministry, and I had a sense too of all that it meant when he was struggling with his own final illnesses. He told me this, that when he was in hospital, when he was unable to have visitors because of the circumstances around him, he would say the prayers to himself in the long nights when he couldn't sleep. And he told himself simply this, if I can remember the communion service, then I'll have some sense of who God is for me. And he would recite the familiar words from the prayer book, the Book of Common Order, without bread or wine, but seeking the comfort of the communion of saints. How hard is it to enter the kingdom of heaven? For him, in hospital and alone, it was difficult. But somehow he found the presence of God in circumstances which became consoling and positive. Conversations you see that point to different kinds of truth. In Dostoevsky's Brothers Karazimov, we read about a definition of hell, that idea that in suffering and in the absence of love, there is a sense that in godlessness, there's a different bleakness, something which will resonate with us to the very heart of the matter. But with God, we can find some kind of solution to our own struggles with what we fear and what we bear. With God, suffering somehow finds a solution, despite our difficult circumstances. So how are we to understand this in light of our Gospel story? You see, Christian life is not cost-free. It's far from easy, and those who are called to it find it difficult. As a minister, for example, we were never really told or prepared to face the suffering of people, except in the most theoretical way. But the privilege of the cross, the privilege of ministry, is to sit with people in their struggles, to help bear the sorrows of ordinary people, to hear about the messiness of life, to recognise that in this community, in our congregations, as we grapple with this new world, this different kind of normality, that in that struggle, we have to discover a sense of what God is. Think about it. Look around you this morning in your heart and your mind, and there are people who are not finding life easy, people who are struggling with faith and doubt, people who have no faith at all, people facing loneliness, people who are having difficulties in marriages and relationships, people carrying the squabbles and burdens of family life, people who are frightened with the future, people who want to resist change, people who are discarded and useless, people who are burdened with the pressures of life, who are seeking after money and status above all else. The Christian life, you see, is far from easy, but it's our greatest comfort that Jesus also knew this, 
and therein lies our hope. To this end, in the Gospel reading this morning, St Mark lays bare a different kind of truth and a challenge, something we face when life seems unfair and difficult, or when the cost of faith in the Christian life seems too great. In our reading about the rich young man, the Gospel writer challenges us to realise that we're to follow Jesus, we have to know that faith comes with a price, and that faith is not about sentiment, it's a costly commodity that demands a very different way of living to the prevailing order in society. The reading opens with the rich young man full of enthusiasm, running up to Jesus and asking him what he has to inherit for eternal life. And although Jesus says he loves the man, he had a compassionate response. It's unexpected and even cold in some ways. In response, the young man, greeting the good teacher, discovers a different kind of challenge. Jesus says, don't call me good, look to God instead. And in the increasingly awkward conversation that follows, the rich young man seeking to confirm his place in heaven announces to Jesus that he's kept the commandments. He tells Jesus that he leads a respectable life, but he doesn't do anyone any harm. But for Jesus, this isn't the real issue. The rich young man, you and me, we have to face the fact that respectability is not enough in living our faith in this post-lockdown world. The real answer to the question about how to inherit eternal life is this. What good have we done? What good will we do? How have we used our talents and blessings? How have we made our status and wealth affect others for the better? This is the crux of the matter. Do you each day seek to positively act for the good for those around you? How much do you go out of your way to strengthen and comfort others? Do you see the Christian life as not easy, but about a kind of respectability in all that you see and do and think? Christianity, you see, is not about a pharisaic or legalistic attitude that ties one to rules, but it's something that looks beyond the rules to its consequences and effect on ordinary life. Christianity is about positive action. And in this new normal world that we're entering, we're being called to witness in a positive way to our communities, to our homes, to the people around us. Christianity is about doing good. And this is precisely where the rich young man and you and I will often fall down. It's our greatest challenge. You see, we have to take time in our lives to stop and think, to count the cost involved in our actions and beliefs, to realize the consequences of our thinking and behavior. But above all else, we recognise, we have to remind ourselves to recognise that even if we approach our difficulties with faith, we are not assured that we'll find solutions to everything we would want. We are simply prompted to find God in all that we do and in all that we seek. To understand this is to understand that our Christian life calls us to journey through earthquakes of personal struggles, of overflowing emotions but also through an attitude of service, to sacrifice for others, even in the face of adversity. And this kind of choice is far from easy. For the rich young man, Jesus was confronting him with the basic and essential question, how much do you want to follow the Christian way of life? Enough to give all that you value away. And we know that in effect, the rich young man answers this, by saying something else. I don't want it as much as all that. If we're honest with ourselves, we all want goodness, but few of us want it enough to pay an ultimate price. And it's armed with this knowledge of human nature that Jesus answers the rich young man. But I don't want you to feel that this is a pessimistic story because it's not. The reading says that Jesus looked on the rich young man with love. And here we find our hope that in our stumbling attempts to get things right, we can be assured that Jesus will look to, to us in love, because we know that Jesus wants to shake us from our complacency and comfort to the service of others. If God loves us like any parent loves us, we have to be willing to speak harsh words that we don't want to hear. Jesus speaks to the rich young man with a sorrowing love that tries to shake us to our senses before it's too late. 
And as one of the great Scottish theologians, T.F. Torrance, argued, a God without wrath would be a God without pity, and it would be a world without meaning. You see, God understands our frailties. He understands our temptations. And he calls us to look beyond them, to act beyond them, so that we can choose to be all that he would have us be. Christian life is not easy, but we are being offered strength to live for others, whatever our circumstances. God offers us the love that empowers, the love that helps us overcome our weaknesses, to turn our grief and sorrow into service, even when our lives have diminished, when we feel we have little to offer. My week ended with contact with an old man in the congregation. I know that their life hasn't been easy, but I offered a prayer for him, and he simply reminded me that he always prays for me, for the elders, and for the congregation. He never forgets us. That kind of selfless action, where we simply offer to God the people who struggle, people who might seem strangers, people who just require the benediction of kindness and the grace of love, can make a huge difference. If we make Christianity too easy, it can often be to our peril. Jesus never withheld the challenging word, when a challenging world would do so in the long run, cause us to benefit. Our religion is not an easy religion. And like the rich young man, we need to be shaken, challenged and chained. And so we look to these words from John Donne, the metaphysical poet who says it for us. I need thy thunder, O God, for thy songs will not suffice me. Sometimes, even in the new normal, when things seem hard, we're called to redouble our efforts to witness, but to witness with kindness, to live with love, to sacrifice without counting the cost. And if we do that, we can answer the question, how do I enter the kingdom of heaven? Amen. And so we make our prayers for the world and for other people. Let us pray. Gentle God of grace and mercy, we call upon you from the bottom of our hearts to hear us as we remember those who suffer at this time. So let us pray. Loving God, as lockdown changes and normality returns, allows us to have a sense of thankfulness for the experiences of family and friends at this difficult time. We remember especially those people who are frightened for their jobs, who are fearful of financial insecurity, whose sense of purpose has changed. We think of those who are struggling because they're becoming unemployed. We remember those who are finding it difficult to pay the rent or the mortgage. People for whom furlough has meant an opportunity to exist, but with the changing circumstances of this time, find a common purpose and a resolution to work more and more difficult. Loving God, you hear the cries of those in need. Be with all who are struggling at this time. And loving God, we pray for the church, particularly at this moment, when buildings remain closed and where communities are wondering how to share and witness to your truth. Give wisdom and purpose to the leaders of the church. Give strength to this congregation. And be with our sister churches in Morningside and Brunsfield. Allow us to work together to provide a common good to seek out our purpose, to be a light that gives hope, to serve the people around us who have needs. And loving God, we pray for the Queen and her ministers at Westminster and Holyrood. We remember those who are making difficult decisions on our behalf. We give thanks for the witness and work of our chief medical officers who attempt to find a way through the COVID pandemic allowing us to meet again, to see our families, to reconnect with our friends, to travel. Cause all of us in our communities to seek to act wisely as things change around us and grant our political leaders strength and courage to speak for justice, to act fairly and in the integrity of their living to build up our communities as they face difficult times. And loving God, we pray today for families, 
for our children now on holiday from school, for educators who are resting, for the people that are important to us in the community, for older people who have been isolating, for those who are emerging from their homes because of their conditions and illnesses, for relationships reconnecting, for the hope and purpose of people as they attempt to understand their situations, for children that they might find leisure and joy before the seriousness of work and school again, for families just being together. Give strength to all who call upon you. Allow them to recognise your presence and your purpose so that we might serve our neighbours, our communities and our families with a sense of your presence. So where there's discord, you might give healing. Where there's anger, you might bring peace. And where there's the need for reconciliation and kindness, you allow us to be instruments of these things. And loving God, this morning, we remember those who are sick, particularly those who are affected by the COVID virus. We remember the places in this world which do not have medical facilities as we have. We think of those who are simply frightened to be alone, those who are living with mental health problems, those affected by anxiety or addictions, those who simply struggle to be human. Be with all who call upon your name and bring your healing. And loving God, we pray for our homes, for those whom we love, for those who might be far from us, for those who are travelling to see us, for those who are wondering if they will ever get on holiday again or see relations, for those who are simply finding these days dark and difficult. Lord, you are the God of all our homes. Bring peace and joy. Bring laughter and hope, particularly to those people whom we love whose needs we name in a moment's silence. And loving God, we pray for younger people especially, those who are seeking to meet up again, those whose relationships have been affected, for the many couples who are unable to get married this year because of the virus, for those who are just struggling, to find a vision and hope in difficult times. Remember the old who've been locked away, those who relied upon the kindness of others. We remember those who simply have life hard at this moment. Give them your hope and your eternal friendship. And finally, loving God, we remember those who died and are accounted with the saints in heaven. We pray especially for the family of Colin McPherson, whose funeral will take place next week. Wipe away the tears. Allow the morning to discover your friendship. Surround them with your loving arms and bring them peace. Hear these and all our prayers, spoken and unspoken. We ask in your name. Amen.
bow your head for God's blessing. Go from this place to love and serve the Lord with gladness, to seek to have an eye for the poor, to have an ear to their cry. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest and remain with you always, now and forevermore. Amen.